A lot of people ask me what I should do the summer before starting medical school. Should I be doing research? Should I be pre-studying? Should I be relaxing on a beach? A lot of people will tell you to just relax, which is true. You really should relax and take this time to kind of reward yourself and not really worry that much. But telling a incoming medical student not to worry is probably not the best suggestion as most of us are very type A and will tend to worry no matter what. So if you want to have a relaxing yet somewhat productive summer and try to get at least some things done to put your best foot forward, here are a few productive yet stress-free things to get the ball rolling for you. This video is gonna cover all the things you're gonna to wanna to think about before starting your very first day of medical school. A lot of what I say is gonna be able to be applied not just to medical school, however, and it can pretty much be applied to any academic institution, college, dental school, PhDs, masters, anything really. And if you're just joining the family, my name is Derek. This is the MedHead channel, where we have lots of fun, but get things done. And if you would like to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell like and follow me on Instagram. So my number one tip is take this time to start creating your ideal study space. You're gonna make sure this area is ergonomic and affordable for you. You just find your study space comforting or somewhat cool to you, something that you at least like at the very least. You can find cool study space ideas online if you're not super creative like me. I actually made a video on creating my study space, which I will put a link in the description down below. You can check out that video after this one. You can really just go to Google and you can probably type in student study space setup and and there's lots of options and different things you can see what works for you but at least by the time school starts you will have this area that is well lit organized and super conducive to a productive study session or whatever type of productivity you want to have for the day remote school remote instruction whatever you are doing virtually is hopefully going to be more of a temporary thing as hopefully the pandemic gets better but Regardless or not, if we're in a pandemic and you're going to lectures from home, you're going to be using the desk a lot, especially if you're gonna be starting medical school. And if you're gonna be at the desk a lot, it might as well be somewhere you enjoy. And for number two, this one is really big for my incoming medical students. The debate on whether you should study or not before medical school. And just for the record, just know, if you do not wanna study before medical school, please do not. That is perfect, that is Perfectly perfect. You are well within your rights. Don't feel like you're gonna be behind. Take this time to reward yourself with some well-earned relaxation. But if you are a little bit worried about the loaded material and how much content there's gonna be, anatomy is an amazing place to start. I wouldn't recommend studying things like microbiology or pathology and things like that because the stressing of details and what's important to some professors varies between professors and between institutions and it's really not worth possibly studying the wrong things. However, with anatomy, you can't really go wrong with that. The human body is going to be the human body between every professor and most of the content will be super consistent no matter where you are no matter which class you're taking so anatomy is an amazing place to start however it is really a beast it's a really big topic that will take time especially if it's your first time learning it and prepping like I did was a great way on cutting down on time studying for anatomy and using that time for other things and doing well all around and still getting great scores on anatomy exams and this really does apply to anyone whether or not you've taken anatomy or not but even more so if you've had any exposure to anatomy it's really a great idea because it'll be a little bit more relaxing seeing it the second time around when you're prepping during the summer. Prepping for anatomy before that first day of school was one of the best things I did, but you may be asking how would I even know where to start? KenHub is your answer who is also the sponsor of this video. KenHub is an amazing resource for learning anatomy. With KenHub you can learn the different regions of anatomy and you can even do histology and radiology which are super integral parts of anatomy that you'll need to know for medical school anyway. There's multiple ways to master anatomy with KenHub that you can personalize to your own learning styles. If I wanted to learn more about the upper them. There are videos we can watch for that. KenHub does a great job at showing you an overview of what you're going to be getting yourself into before jumping straight into the shoulder and arm and other parts of the upper extremity. Depending on when you're at anatomy, you can skip or start at the very beginning. And for those of you who have no idea where to start or what your learning style for anatomy is, there's outlines for you to kind of follow if you need to. Here's an example of a video that is super useful with great images for first time learners. We can also take a quiz and even customize a quiz for your own liking. You'll notice a lot of the images will have highlighting to point to specific areas of the anatomy structures and it's always super colorful and realistic. There's also the article feature, which I love. The articles are super nice because there's summaries of everything you learned with some clinical integrations, which is important for medical school and arguably the most important since it's applicable to things you'll see in the clinic a lot. And besides all the great things I've described, there's way more. You can even search and look for different items that you're specifically wanting to learn about. For instance, if I come home from shadowing and I want to learn a little bit more about the femur, because we were talking about it a lot, 
Here are a lot of imaging and things that we can learn more deeply about the femur. If you just want to learn the basic anatomy of the femur, you click there. And there's a nice whole section with videos, quizzes, and atlases that are all things femur. After learning from KinHub with the videos and the quizzes and you feel comfortable enough, you can then go to an Anki anatomy deck and unsuspend the structures for the corresponding section. And you might be asking, what do you mean by that? To keep up with the structures you've learned and make sure you remember them by the time school starts, you can download an anatomy deck. I'll put a link for our Anki anatomy deck down in the description below, but you can also do a simple Google search of Anki anatomy decks and there will be lots of options that will come up. Reddit will probably have some of them and you can see which one you'll probably like best. And honestly, this is super important because this is the way I study for anatomy even in medical school. I've learned the anatomy through an amazing resource like KenHub and then go to Anki, unsuspend the cards and keep learning them and make sure they stayed in my memory with the space repetition. So this is a great way to kind of get started with the studying habits that you're gonna be building while you're in medical school either way. And if you can, figure out which regions your school teaches in what order. Like for instance, my school like to start with the back and the upper extremities. So I took the summer to learn the back and the upper extremities. Don't do all of anatomy because it's almost impossible or if you do do it, it's not gonna be a fun summer. However, learn maybe one or two of the first two regions you know your school's gonna teach and start with those sections. GenHub has kindly offered my followers a discount to a premium account, so I'll put a link down below. Use that to get some money off if this awesome resource is something that interests you. My third tip is to find a community. Now, this is something that is also super important for people who are going to a new city, a new state, a new area. Friends and classmates can be a great resource for emotional and moral support and a lot of the tough times in medical school, someone to vent to, someone to figure out when that assignment is due because you didn't quite hear in the lecture and they're ultimately just great to know that you aren't alone. A lot of the time schools will have social media groups start popping up, connect with your peers through maybe Facebook, a Facebook group, and maybe group me. If there's not a class group chat already, maybe also see about starting one yourself and maybe start to get to know each other during the summer so that by the time school starts, we at least have an idea of who's who and it'll make the transition way easier. My fourth tip is try to pick one or two healthy habits that you know you're gonna wanna integrate when medical school starts. Habits are hard to develop and it's gonna be very hard to try to start doing it right when school starts because it's gonna be such a whole new thing with things flying everywhere and you're already experiencing pretty heavy changes. So start early, start at least two weeks before medical school and try to start developing Developing that habit as soon as you can so by the time that first day is around it's basically second nature to you or is it first nature would it have it be first nature or second nature I don't know you guys look that up let me know in the comments down below but you get my point I wanted to start eating healthier and exercising better which I did hold up very well for the first semester of medical school and other examples of things you may want to develop habits for is drinking more water reading more, getting better sleep, or time management. The time management one's a little bit hard because it's summer and I want you to relax and I don't want you to be on a crazy strict schedule. But a good thing to do is to kind of make a schedule for how you're gonna have a productive yet relaxing fun summer, even schedule when you're going to be doing fun things and kind of stick to it to get used to basically having a deadline and agenda and being true to your goals for the day, even if that is Let's go to the pool at 1 p.m. Actually go to the pool at 1 p.m. Stick to your schedule. Tip number five is money, 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 money and unfortunately obviously medical school is expensive and i don't want you to have to worry and stress crazy amount during the summer but it may be a good idea to start worrying a little bit start making your budget start having ideas about how much rent food and tuition is going to cost and other kind of needs and start making a good budget that you can kind of run into with financial aid so you know how much to pull out and how much to deal with that's probably a better thing to start with in the beginning of summer because i think fast one needs to be done fairly early before school starts at least mine did another thing is look for scholarships and things online you won't have a crazy amount of time to do this when school starts so at least start now know what kind of scholarships are out there and maybe start applying to a good amount you have the time so why not maybe you'll get some money out of it and get a good chunk of that medical school tuition and rent paid for and my sixth and final tip is to find your negotiables and make sure you schedule them in and by non-negotiables i mean non-academic things that are super important to you that are also important for your mental health and your performance in medical school and in life just in general these things that you cannot push aside family, friends, cooking, sports, anything that you really enjoy. Make sure the same way you schedule your study sessions and things like that, you also schedule these non-negotiables and you can even use these non-negotiables as rewards to basically push yourself to finish studying so that you can finally dwell in what makes you happy. Not that medical school and loads of Anki won't make you happy, but you know, a different type of relaxed, happy. I hope these tips add a little bit more certainty to your summer, knowing that you took the right steps to have an amazing, productive school year. But above all else, this summer, make sure to recognize how far you've come, celebrate your accomplishments, and be kind to yourself because you really do deserve it. And like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see all of you guys in the very next MedHead.